You are listening to Lead Through Strengths, where you'll learn to apply your greatest strengths at work. And today joining me is Strother Gaines, in from DC, here in the studio in Austin, Texas. Often, if people look at the list, like mm-hmm. I'm thinking of a person who looked at her list of strengths from Clifton Strengths, and she sees communication in her top five, and she's like, number one, number two, number three, number yes, 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 yes. Those are so me. And then communication. Well, I have been told in the last few performance reviews that that's actually one of my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So that one, I'm not going to claim that one as a strength. That's actually been my greatest weakness. Mm -hmm. And if you think of it like the this or that situation, I feel like when I look back on the situation that she was describing to me, she was saying, I'm going to give you all my communication all the time, turned all the way up, (laughs) or no, Uh, I'm shutting down. Yeah. I'm not speaking. So, <laughs> <laughs> which is great in a meeting. People love that. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly, you went from "Hey, you don't give anyone room to speak in a meeting" to getting feedback that "Hey, you have resting grumpy face" or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just sh- literally shut down. Yeah. I, the being able the, the on or the off. I think it's it's you're totally right. It's back into that. What is the appropriate level right now? And as you become more adept at your strengths and you give them the space, I think that we struggle with that because in order to learn, it's it's like your mutant powers. <laughs> I was just watching the old X Men cartoons. <laughs> this is a, a weird deviation. I was you're like, for where are you going? Yeah, no, <laughs> like, where are you going with this? And uh, the old X Men cartoon starts with Jubilee. Uh, just sort of coming to terms with being a mutant. And she has the sort of fireworks powers. And she just doesn't know how to control them. So they kind of help sometimes, and sometimes they just go off and destroy everything, and she hates them because she hasn't learned to wield them yet. And you can't learn to wield those powers if you're too protective of them. She has to swing the pendulum too far to see, oh, that's... And now it's too much i got to learn to pull back my fireworks, because if I go that far, it hurts people. And so, in protection of ourselves and other people's and not looking stupid and not feeling silly and all those sort of things that we protect against, when you have a, a, a in particular, a strength that has a bias against it, like competition or something mm-hmm. like that, where it's like, well, you're just being a jerk. We're nervous to swing for the fences, because mm-hmm. we see really clearly what it's going to look like if it goes wrong. But you have to allow yourself that grace and that flexibility to learn how to control your powers or you're going to waste them. So swing for the fences. Let the pendulum swing in both directions until you find that nice, juicy middle ground where you're actually leveraging them appropriately. Yeah. What a great way just to give yourself permission to experiment with it. Mm -hmm. And to not think that there's only one way to do it because competition doesn't mean... I'm shutting down, or I'm challenging you to a gunfight. (laughs) It doesn't have to mean this or this all the way. Mm -hmm. It can be simple things like, hey, when I lead through competition, I'm keenly aware of our standing compared with our competitors, and it means that I make really cool bubble charts that show how we stack up in the industry, Mm -hmm. and the fact that I'm driven and motivated by that makes me a better performer. And so I think when people go from the this or that pendulum, Mm -hmm. they shut off the ability to even play with the middle and say, what else could it mean? Mm -hmm. And what else? And what else? And what else? Well, you and I do, both of us, when we facilitate, oftentimes we'll do that activity, this or that. And it is, and the thing, and it's, you ask people, do you do this or do you that? And then you find where they, and they spread themselves out throughout the room. And it's very rare that you get people who are like, I'm the full polar. And sometimes it happens, and that's an identifier for people, and and they really care about that. But most people do fall somewhere in that midground, And so in that respect, it's easy for people to see that it's shades of gray. But when it's intellectual and you're not in like the actual physical practice of the strength, people are like, well, it's I'm one of the poles. And you're probably just not. Yeah. Well, let's let's end with an example like that. So I did that exercise Mm -hmm. and I remember this event vividly. The woman led through intellection, Mm -hmm. and it was a question in my this or that exercise. I was having them line up on a continuum, whether they do their best thinking when they're in the midst of a group conversation, or if they're able to be alone and do the deep thinking Mm -hmm. on their own. And she literally slammed her body against the (laughs) sidewall to show, I am so far on the I need Mm -hmm. to be by myself. 
but she was in an environment where she was not allowed to work from home Mm -hmm. and she didn't have any physical space where she could be alone. And she felt like she was always getting barraged with collaborate and group work and all of these things. But Mm -hmm. she's saying, I can't be at my best like that. And I need you to know it. And so that was a moment where she could bring it out and say, I need more alone time. Mm -hmm. I need to go in my cave to think. But how do you do that where if you just decided I'm going to maturely bring that up at work? I feel like I don't have a physical space to do that Mm -hmm. without sounding like you're having a temper tantrum and stamping your feet and saying, I need my corner office where I can be alone. (laughs) You know, how do you raise, first you have to learn that you have that need Mm -hmm. and that's difficult enough. Strengths finder can help a lot with that. But once you realize I have this need, but I don't know how to bring this up with my peers Mm -hmm. or my leader without sounding selfish or like a child Mm -hmm. or, um, absorbed in me and not thinking about the business needs or how the culture actually works. So how do you face that? I think the first piece that we, anytime we're asking for something like that, framing it in what's in it for you instead of for me. If I come to someone and I say, well, I need a corner office because I really need time alone and I just need you to make this accommodation for me, like deal with it. You're not going to get any good work from me until you do it. Like, even if I have that corner office, I'm already like, I'm not, No. You just sound like a brat. Yeah, Yeah. I don't want to give that to you because you're just complaining right now. But if you can frame that for me in, here's how I produce my best works. Especially if you've done, like, a a team strengths finder type thing where everybody kind of knows and we're all sort of moving into that methodology. We get it. Strength, let's find a way to activate yours and activate mine. How can we make space for everyone? If If you're lucky to have that culture, then framing it that way. Say, hey, you want the best work from me? We've found, like, one of the things I found in my report is that I do my best work like this, and I don't feel like we have access to that. Is there any way, what could we do? What could we do? Instead of do this, saying, what can we do to make this work? And then it's a co-creative process. Then you are collaborating, and you're giving them the opportunity to throw something out there, which maybe you've not considered either. Yeah, maybe you don't have a corner office, so you get to go down to the park outside, and instead of someone thinking that you're just messing around out there for an hour, you're actually at the park alone doing your thinking time, Mm -hmm. and you come back, and when you show that you produce better work that way, (laughs) then people will say, oh, okay, yeah, go do your thinking in the park, because (laughs) we want that brain (laughs) power that comes back when you do it. And don't let your anticipated thoughts of what you think people will think about you stop you. Because I think oftentimes we're trying to project ourselves into other people and we usually get that wrong. So when you think, if I went to the park, I bet they would think that I'm lazy or I bet they would think I'm just slacking off. Then tell us you're not. (laughs) A lot of times we're very nervous to throw those things out there, especially if it feels like an accommodation or something that not everybody gets. People feel like, well, I have to do things the way they've been done. And there's no rule that says, well, we have to do things the way it's been done. And Mm -hmm. if you can frame it and you're going to look at what you get from me, even, and sometimes you you might have to have a little data to support it. Like this week I tried out this thing And I found that I produced so much better or it was easier to work with me or I had an easier time in this way. Here's here's the data from my experiment. Can we make this more long term? So there's lots of ways to make it less jump your feet and being a brat and more. How can we build this together? Mm -hmm. Make it about the business, not about you. Mm -hmm. And I like what you brought up about what else could we do? Mm -hmm. How could we accomplish it given what we've gotten? or given what we have available Mm -hmm. to us. And then knowing things like you may not get the whole thing that you want. Mm -hmm. Certainly getting a a physical office space, that's a big kind of request that's probably not likely. But what if the concession is that the team understands, hey, I'm going to put these big old headphones on Mm -hmm. and it's my one hour tiger time and I'm not going to answer Skype, no instant message, mm-hmm. no text. I'm going to shut out the world just for one hour a day. And that's not something you've ever been able to have before. And suddenly you're super productive. Then your team's going to want to honor that one hour. That seems mm-hmm. very reasonable compared with you just deciding that, well, I can't be productive here, so I'm going to pout. Right. I had a client who, on that very specific example, on their the door of their cubicle or like the entry to their cubicle, had a, um, a traffic light magnetic piece and he would put the magnet on the one like could you come talk to me it was on green <laughs> am i deep in something don't come in it's on red so he let people know 
I'm in a deep workspace, like, don't interrupt. Because I think that is a challenge at work, is is that constant, like, you want to go grab coffee? You want to go do this? Like, hey, can I grab you for just a second? Can I talk to you for a second? And his solution was, I'll just be very clear and very transparent. Like, right now, no, you can't. And they loved it because they knew when it's green, cool, great. And when it was red, he's busy. And I'm not offended because that's not, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> it's, I'm not talking to anyone right now because mm-hmm. I produce better work that way. And even knowing the, the talent themes, like having the conversation where this is a team event so that someone can see, for example, someone who leads through focus, mm-hmm. that they could be in an open work environment and have their back to the room and literally not be able to hear everything that's going off behind them because they are so focused on that one thing. Other people are so distractible that they wouldn't understand that's possible. They may not even believe it Mm -hmm. to your point about, you know, putting your own behaviors or the the thoughts in your head, your lens Mm -hmm. on other people. So uh, that's, that's a powerful one. Yeah. Thanks for listening to lead through strengths where you can apply your greatest strengths at work hope you get at least one tip that you can take today in terms of keeping your commitment to yourself, keeping your commitment to your strengths. And if you want a little help with that, get Strother in the house. He's good at keeping you honest at doing this stuff. Bye for now. Bye.